Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So when I moved here a couple of years ago, I thought to myself, we're not too far away from Dunstable. Well, actually, I think we're around 15 miles away from Dunstable. And at Dunstable, or Dunstable Downs, there's a TV repeater on 1.2 gigahertz called GB3 TV. And I thought to myself, am I gonna be able to reach it from here? Now standing from the end of my garden, it's kind of that direction. 14 for 15 miles in that direction is GB3 TV. It receives and transmits on 1.2 gigahertz. Now luckily, my antenna, which I have at the top of the house, actually is a 1.2 gigahertz antenna as well. It's a tri-band antenna for two, two meters, 70 centimeters, and 1.2 gigahertz which is 23 centimeters however gb3 tv which is over that way somewhere uses a dual orford slot antenna which i believe is horizontally polarized so the question is will i be able to transmit a datv signal from here using a vertically polarized antenna to a horizontally polarized antenna on 1.2 gigahertz so that's what this video is about we're going to try to see if we can do that now we're gonna use two bits of equipment and some software to try and achieve that. So let's go into the shack and test it out. So the first piece of hardware we'll need will be a transmitter. Now the software that I'll be using to generate the DATV signal will work with either a Lime SDR Mini, a Hack RF, or a Pluto SDR. But we'll look a bit closer at the software a bit later on. Now this microphase and SDR E200 can run the add-on Pluto firmware. So I'll be using this as the transmitter. It's powered via a USB-C cable and controlled over an ethernet connection. Now I do have a video on my channel showing how to image an SD card with the Pluto firmware that runs with the E200 if you're interested. Now the E200 has a transmit SMA socket and a receive SMA socket. For this test though, I'll only be using the transmit port. Now the output power at 1.2 gigahertz from the E200 is only a few milliwatts, so I'll need an amplifier of some kind. However, I did find this rather cheap RF amplifier on Banggood. It also looks like they have four different versions, which each support a different frequency range. Now this one supports around 1.25 gigahertz, which is perfect for the desired transmit frequency of 1.249 gigahertz, which is the input frequency on the GB3 TV DATV repeater. Now it appears to be about 15 watts RF output, and we all know most of these amplifiers specs are always over inflated, but will it be enough to transmit my DATV signal over 15 miles away? One other factor to consider is that the antenna at GB3 TV, the DATV repeater, is horizontally polarized, while my home vertical antenna is vertically polarized. Now this means there can be up to 20 dB of loss in signal strength being received. Now ideally I should be using a horizontally polarized Yagi antenna, but I just don't have one available for the 23 centimeter band. Now on a positive note, and according to this elevation profile generator, from my location to the GB3 TV's location, it's a direct line of sight with no obstructions. Now that's awesome because I think if we had any obstructions between my antenna and the GB3 TV antenna, then this test would instantly be a pretty much a non-starter. So after a couple of weeks, the amplifier arrived and it feels like a nice solid build. Connections are minimal with an SMA input and an SMA output connection. There's also two little lugs for connecting the power supply. Now this little amplifier runs on around 24 volts or up to 28 volts DC meaning we'll have to find another solution to power this as my home shack power supply only goes up to around 15 volts. Now inside the amp, it looks rather tidy with a nice simple design. The main RF components are mounted towards the bottom against the casing, which I presume would be used to dissipate any heat while in use. Now maybe we'll also need to attach a heatsink, something like this. Now there are actually four holes in each of the corners of the amp, which I could use to secure the amp to the heatsink but actually I have a better solution for this and it's actually quicker. Now we need to sort out the power supply issue and to do this, I'll use one of these voltage step up devices. These are fairly cheap and you can get them from Amazon or eBay. And the way they work is that you supply voltage on the input. In my case, it'll be 
13.8 volts DC to the input, and then you can adjust the voltage output by adjusting one of the little controls on the board. Now I've also just received this brilliant new multimeter, which is an inbuilt IR camera, which can show on-screen temperature of the device that it's looking at, as well as measuring most things a multimeter can measure. So I'll use this to set the output voltage to 28 volts DC. So I attach the black probe to the negative output and the red probe to the positive output. Now turning on my shack power supply and then checking the output voltage. As I turn the little voltage control on the step up device using an isolated adjustment tool, we can see the output voltage start to increase. Now I think the specification said that the optimum voltage was around 24 volts, but we can use up to 28 volts. Now by the way, this multimeter is pretty cool. It plots a graph as the voltage changes so you can quickly see voltage history of what you're measuring. Plus, just look how clear those white value digits look against the black background. Now, I'm definitely quite glad that I actually got this multimeter now because I was looking at a few other ones and I just couldn't really make up my mind. Now, with a voltage output set to 28 volts, which is perfect for the RF amp that we're going to use, let's just see how well that IR temperature camera works on this multimeter. Well, it appears to work. Looking at the center of this voltage step up device, we can see it's warmer around those components that's doing all the work. Now, once we get the amplifier up and running, I'll also use this to check the temperature of that too, as I'm currently unsure whether the amplifier is gonna run hot while it's in use. Okay, so let's get things connected to see if I can actually get my DATV signal to the GB3 TV repeater. So first I need to connect the amplifier power cables to the output of the DC voltage step up device and then connect everything else together. Now at the bottom here, we've got the ANSDR E200, which is powered via USB from a powered USB hub. You also notice an ethernet cable plugged in, which goes off to the router, which my computer is also plugged into. The TX SMA port of the E200 is then connected to the input of the amplifier, and then the output of the amplifier, we have the blue coax, which goes off to the antenna on the roof, which I showed you at the start of the video. You'll also notice the voltage step up device connected to the amp, and then that goes off to the shack power supply. Now at this moment in time, the shack power supply is turned off, but the E200 is powered on and ready to be connected over ethernet. Now I know this looks a little small, but don't worry, I will zoom into each application and explain what they do separately. I just wanted to briefly show you the applications that I'll be using to perform this test. Okay, so on the left is an application called OBS. Now it's a very popular application designed to generate video and then stream it to streaming servers like Twitch, Kik or YouTube. Now I'll only be using this for virtual webcam feature, which will provide a video signal that I'll want to transmit. Now I also have SDR Connect running tuned to 1.249 gigahertz and connected to an RSPDX receiver. Now this is only so I can monitor the transmitted signal coming from the setup. Now after all, I will need to know that I'm actually transmitting something. Over to the right, we have a web browser opened and we are viewing a live stream from the BATC website. BATC stands for British Amateur Television Club. Now a club member monitors the output of GB3 TV and streams it onto the internet. As I only have one antenna, which we'll use to transmit, I cannot monitor the repeater output live. So I'll have to rely on this stream to see if we actually make it into the GB3 TV repeater. Lastly, we have an application called DATV Easy. Now this is a fantastic application, which as mentioned earlier, works with the Lime SDR, HackRF and Pluto SDR. Now this takes an audio and video signal and then sends this to the connected transmitting device to generate a DVB S2 transmission. We can control the power level, the DVB mode, FEC and symbol rate on this application. You can also control the transmit frequency. So of course I set mine to 1249 megahertz. The configuration tab is where we set the IP address of the Pluto so that DATV Easy can connect to it. Now, as soon as I press the start button, DATV Easy will attempt to grab the video and audio streams from OBS. And then in the background, it will encode them using the selected codec, in which this case it's H265, which is then sent to the Pluto 
for transmitting. Now, once transmitting, I should now see a rather white signal appear on SDR Connect software. Now, this is a low power signal coming from the E200. When I switch the Shack power supply on to power the amplifier, the signal level should increase. And with any luck, my DATV signal will be transmitted to GB3TV. Now, once GB3TV receives my signal and assuming it's strong enough to obtain a lock, my transmitted signal will appear on the repeater's output frequency. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, we're using someone else's receiver to monitor the output, who's then streaming it to the BATC website for us to view. Now, there is going to be a few seconds delay for it to actually get back to us. And there you go, it works. It's very weak, but it's getting a lock. Now, that's pretty amazing and proves that this harebrained idea actually works. Now I did suffer some dropouts where the signal dropped too low, but I reckon with a horizontally polarized 23 centimeter Yagi pointing directly at GB3 TV, I'll get a 100% lock. So maybe that's something to think about rather than buying a 23 centimeter Yagi, maybe I could build one. Who knows, that might even feature in another video. If you're interested in seeing that, let us know down in the comments below. I'll leave links down in the video description of some of the items that I use in this video if you're interested in trying this out. Now, after having the amplifier running for around 10 minutes, I was surprised to see that it didn't actually get that warm. You can clearly see here the amp is warmer than the surrounding objects, but even the heatsink wasn't overly warm. I used double sided sticky thermal transfer tape to stick the amp to the heatsink, which appeared to work very well and keep it exactly where I placed it. If you're in the UK, you can check out the UK repeaters website where you can see any TV repeaters that you can use. And I'm sure around the world, there will be equivalent websites where you can take a look and find your local TV transmitter for amateur radio. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting. And I'll see you guys in the next video.